different templates. The first you'll see here is Rapid. And the Rapid template is really meant for that infield workflow. So you just got done flying your drone, it landed, you may be far away from the office, and you really want to make sure that everything you collected is good. You're ready to go, you can leave the field. So this produces a low resolution ortho mosaic and digital surface model, um, and it does so really, really fast. When you're back in the office, you can move over to the mapping template. This again produces your 2D data, such as your orthos and your digital surface models, but also produces your 3D data sets, so 3D point clouds, 3D meshes, even 3D PDFs. And the last template we have here is not at all about creating products that can be overlaid on a map. Instead, you want to go and you want to inspect an object. It could be a utility tower, it could be a rooftop. Instead of making a map, you want to work with that image in its native image space, and its native resolution. So we provide a template to do that as well. So as I click create on one of these templates, I'm presented with just a couple inputs. I'm giving my project a name, a location on my file system, and then I'm pointing it to a folder full of images. So to save a little time, I've already run this. So I have 15 images here in Africa. And the first thing you'll notice is a set of points and lines. These represent our GPS data coming off of the drone. And so individual blue points are the GPS locations of the drone and the sensor. So I can click on one of these individual images and I can actually see the raw drone imagery before it's processed. The orange lines represent the flight path of our drone or the recreation of our flight path, that is. Um, so at this point, easy enough, I can just click start. When I click start, I get returned some of my 2D products. So here you'll see we have an uh, ortho mosaic that was created from 15 different images. Additionally, we have our digital surface model. So I can turn that on, I can adjust the transparency of my ortho mosaic. And so again, if I wanted to adjust some of the properties before I do my processing, I have a couple options here. So by opening up the image properties dialog, I can get some more information about my source imagery, such as the coordinate system that my raw drone imagery was in, the source of my GPS data. So from a source perspective, we can either read in imagery straight, uh, GPS data straight from the imagery, that's called exit data, or we can read it straight from the uh, external file. In this case, we brought in a CSV file. We have a large camera database, so you don't have to worry about specifying your camera model. We'll detect that automatically from your imagery. And then finally, down here at the bottom, we have all the, all the, all the individual metadata for each of the images. We also have a series of processing options, so if you're an imagery expert and you really want to turn those dials and specify each of the individual parameters that you want to use within your processing, We've laid those out and it to an easy to use menu here. For looking at the quality of your, of your processing project, we produce a processing report. This gives you information about your source imagery, a uh, preview of the actual products that are being created, all the way down to the actual resolution of my final products and what the, and what the accuracy of those final products look like. So at this point, I could take this data set and I could easily open this up inside a desktop, but I want to share this with my organization. So ArcGIS, or Drone to Map, uses your ArcGIS online identity. So I'm logged into the app and I can immediately share my data as a tile service. So you'll see here I have the different 2D products that Drone to Map produced. I can simply pick which product that I want to cache and I can choose to share this with everybody in my organization share it publicly or with individual groups. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel here and I'm going to jump over to RTS Online. Here you can see I've actually recreated um, the full collection of this and ran this at the native resolution. And let's just zoom in here a little bit and let's check out the resolution of this. So this was about 1,250 images and you can see the image resolution of this is just incredible. Much better than you're going to get with an airplane or even a satellite. Now, in addition to 2D products, I also mentioned that we create 3D products. So here is a 3D mesh. So this was created, again, from the imagery only. And as I zoom into here, you'll actually see that we're creating, we're getting the 3D aspects of all this imagery. 
Now, in addition to 3D meshes, we also produce point clouds. So here is a last file that was produced from drone to map. Uh, the default rendering you'll see here is elevation, but because we actually derive this from imagery, we're able to render this point cloud as an RGB point cloud. So as this draws, you'll see again, it looks a lot like our imagery. But now as I zoom in, you'll start to see this actually is indeed a point cloud. I'm going to orbit around this building, and you'll see we're actually creating a 3D mesh and storing this 3D mesh inside of a PDF.